Hey everybody, it's Brad again with another Floriani video for you. Uh, in today's Floriani Club, we are learning to do embossed towels. Um, I know we've done embossed towels before, but I didn't actually have a video that I made for it, so um, I want to make one, and here we are. Uh, so it's going to be a Valentine's Day themed one, but using this exact same process, you could use any shape um, and make some embossed towel monograms. Um, so let's begin. I'm going to open up my Floriani Total Control program. And it's going to start me off on my Floriani Today screen here. Um, uh, I'm going to have these February designs on your CD for you, so you don't need to download these. You can just run the file, uh, and it'll install them automatically for you. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and create a new design. So just click on Create New Design. Um, and so uh, what we're going to do is use a applique shape to start with. Um, and we're not going to actually use it as an applique, but in the applique shapes section, they have a bunch of really useful shapes um, that can be converted into artwork and then messed with in other ways. So we're going to go up to our applique shapes uh, icon, which is this one. It's got kind of a picture of a book and then like a like a little picture of a patch. It's right next to this wizard. Um, we're going to left click on applique shapes, and these are all shapes that I can use for all kinds of things, not just appliques. Um, by default, they come up as an applique, though. Um, so don't be surprised when you click on this heart, which is what we're going to choose. You're going to click on this heart and say OK. So we're left click on the OK. Uh, and it's going to come up and actually be um, an applique by default. So we can turn that off uh, rather easily, um, change it from an applique to just a simple line by moving your mouse over the heart. Now it has to be selected here, so if you don't see your little uh, little boxes around it, just make sure you left click on the heart. See, now I've got my little boxes. Um, uh, so anyway, you you move it over one of the lines, the icon becomes a hand, and you right click. You're going to go down to where it says convert to on this drop down menu, and then all the way down at the bottom, our last option is artwork. We're going to convert this to artwork, and just left click on that. And now this is just a line, okay? It's not stitches, it's not anything, it's just a line. And we're going to be able to convert it to um, the various types of stitches that we're going to need uh, to complete this project. Um, so I am going to resize this heart here because it's a little bit too small for um, what I want to do with it. So uh, to resize it, I want you to go up to the Properties menu up here on the upper right-hand screen. And this little purple icon is our Transform Tools. So we're going to left click on our transform tools and we're going to set our height. Um, by default this is going to come in at a little over 4 inches. We're going to change our height to 7 inches and just click apply. Alright, so now we've got this is going to be the outside edge of our uh, embossing uh, that's going to go on our towel. Uh, so we now need to go ahead and build the next layer of our embossing in. Uh, because this is going to be a multi-layered embossing, there's going to be some embossing going on in here, and then an empty space where the towel is going to pop up, and then more embossing. Uh, so we're going to have several of these hearts um, that we're going to be working with. So we need to make another one of these hearts. Now, we could go in and grab another applique shape and bring it in and convert it and all that, but we don't need to do that. Uh, the way I want you to do this is to copy and paste this onto itself. Um, and the way we're going to copy and paste it onto itself is we're going to right click somewhere on the line again when it becomes a hand. Okay, so see it's a hand right now. We right click, uh, we're going to choose copy, and then right click. You can right click anywhere at this point. I'm going to right click again and choose paste. And what that does is it makes an identical copy of this first line, um, it puts it right on top of the other one. Um, so we don't actually need to select anything because it automatically selects the second one. If we look at our sequence view over here, uh, we've got artwork and then artwork. Um, the second one is the one that's currently highlighted, and that's the one we're going to be adjusting. So I'm going to go to my um, my properties menu here. I'm going to go to the transform tool, and I'm going to change this one's height to five inches, and click apply. Okay, so I've got this one is five inches. And I may as well just leave it centered the way that it is. Okay, so that's cool. Um, now I need one more of these. And so I'm going to grab my second one that I've made. I'm going to right click it, copy again. Remember, you can't right click it until it's on the where it makes a little hand. Uh, and now we're going to right click again and paste. Okay, so 
it has now made three of these. If we look under sequence view, one, two, three, and the third one is the copy of the second one. All right now we're going to go again back to properties to transform. We're going to set our height this time to three inches and click apply. Okay, so I've got one, two, three hearts, and they're all, you know, pretty much centered around one another. Okay, so what uh, what this is going to look like uh, when we're done is we're going to have this is going to have the nap of the towel coming up. This is going to be embossing, and then in here we're going to have a letter, which is going to be an embossed letter. Okay, so uh, how are we going to get our letter? Well, we're going to use a true type font. Um, letter for this. Uh, so I'm going to go up to File and choose Import TT Text. That's how we get uh, TrueType fonts into, uh, into the program. We're going to click Import TT Text um, and you choose what letter. I'm going to do an M for Meadow. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do a B for Brad uh, just because there's an extra step involved when you've got um, something with holes in it. Um, and a B has holes in it and, a, and an M doesn't. So we're going to do a B. Uh, and I'm going to change my font here to something I like. It, it can be anything. Um, fatter letters tend to work better than skinnier letters. They just look better because more of the nap comes up um, when the letter is fatter. Uh, but you can really pick whatever you want. I'll just do this Cooper STD font. Um, it really, it doesn't really matter that much. So uh, I'm going to hit OK. Now I've got my capital letter B. My font is selected. I'm just going to click OK. All right. So here's my letter. Now this. I'm going to change the size of, and I'm not going to use the transform menu. I'm just going to use one of these corners here um, where I've got the white boxes. I'm going to grab one of the corner white boxes and stretch it because this way I can kind of see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. All right, so here I've got this is about where I want this to be. It's more or less centered within this, this heart here, um, and that's going to work just fine for our purposes. Um, now, there is an extra step involved when you're using a letter like a letter B that has these holes in it. If it was a letter M, there wouldn't be little holes in here, um, and, and I wouldn't have to do this. But if your letter that you picked has these little holes, then you have to go in and you're going to select the B, or you know whatever the letter is. You want to take this and break it apart. Okay, You're going to go right click, you have to right click and bring up the drop down menu, and choose break apart. Okay. So now that that's broken apart, um, e and each one of these is its own piece, um, that's going to make it so when we apply stitches to this, it um, it will make each one of these its own section instead of trying to make one continuous fill that includes all of these, which would end up making a big crazy jump stitch from the edge to here. Um, <coughs> again, if uh, your letter doesn't have holes in it, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but anyway, okay, so now we're ready to um, start setting uh, fill types and everything to this. Uh, so let's see, we're going to click off of our B, and if you look down here, we ended up with two separate colors for all this stuff, which we don't actually need. We need this all to be one color um, so that it uh, it's just a little easier to work with. So we want to select everything, uh, which you can do by clicking on all items right here. And we're just going to go and right click on the first color. It, it actually doesn't matter what color we, we make this as long as it's all the same color. So we're going to right click on that. And what that does is it makes it all one color. Um, so now everything's this blue color, um, whereas it was gray and blue before by default. Uh, so now let's see. The next step, we need to take everything that's here and copy it and then paste it onto itself. Um, so we need to take all the whole design, because we need to have two of every one of these lines. Um, so we're going to do back to all items. Um, we're going to right click somewhere and copy. And then we're going to right click again and paste. And if we look now, we've got these new ones down here are the ones that are highlighted. So the first six things, one, two, three, four, five, six, are our first part of our design. And uh, the next six, seven through 12, down here in the sequence view, um, are the the copy uh, of the first part of our design. Um, so um, we need to do a little bit of edit, a little bit of editing here. Um, we're going to combine some things. So the very first one here is going to be combined with the second one, and the third one is actually going to be combined with. 
Oh, let's see. The sixth one. Yes. Okay. So, so it's a little weird here. So let me let me do this in steps. So we're gonna do the first two. Number one. I'm gonna hold down the control key and left click on the second one. Okay. So we're looking in our sequence view here, one and two. We're gonna hold down the control key, select one and two, and we're gonna right click and choose combine. Boom. Okay. So now this is one piece um, on the top. Uh, and we're going to take this first part that we still have selected. We're going to right click, choose convert to complex fill. Boom. Okay, so this is our first part is now a fill, but we don't want it to be this, this, uh, you know, total fill stitch. We're going to make this a, what's called a motif fill. Um, so we're going to go down and we're going to change our fill type from standard to motif. Okay, and then under pattern here, we're actually going to change this to, from 100, we're going to change this down to 115. Okay, so 115, and just click on apply. And what it does is it's going to put this um, kind of like uh, cross stitch almost pattern in uh, that's going to tack down the nap of our towel uh, for our embossing. Okay, so once we have that done, um, now we're going to combine the outer edge of this heart with the outer edge of our B, okay? But we're gonna leave this part alone, okay? So we're gonna do, we're gonna select this one, which is gonna be number two now, and then we're gonna select the one that's gonna be number five, which is gonna be the outer part of our B, and we're gonna right click it, and again, we're gonna choose combine. And now again, we're gonna right click, Convert to Complex Fill, and we're going to make this from Standard. We're going to change it to Motif, and again, we're going to change the pattern to number 115, and click Apply. Okay, and now we need our last two bits, which is going to be in the sequence view, numbers 3 and 4. So right click, or uh, hold down the Control key, and then left click on number three in the sequence view and number four in the sequence view here. We're going to right click, convert to complex fill, and then once again do, oops, change it from standard to motif and from 100 to 115 and we're gonna click apply. Okay, so that's our embossing done. Now we need to have a satin stitch going around the outside edge of each of these things to make it have a more finished look. Um, and that is very easy to do. We're going to select each of these artworks here in our sequence view. And you can actually click and drag a box around these. Or you could hold down the control and left click on each one separately. And once they're all selected, we're going to right click on them. We're going to convert to, and we're going to choose a steel stitch. Okay. This is the third one down, steel. I'm going to left click on that. And boom, it puts that steel satin stitch all the way around. Now I'm going to change my width here from three millimeters to two millimeters and hit apply. I like it to be a little bit narrower than the default there. Um, let's put this in 3D. And there you have it. This is our embossed applique. And this time, uh, the last time we did this, we did it with a square. This time we've done it with a custom heart shape. Uh, this is able to be done with any type of shape that you have, though. Not only any of these applique shapes, but any shape that you could draw, any shape that you could trace off of something else. Maybe you found uh, a pattern in a book, quilt book or something, that you would like to use as your, um, as your outline. Maybe you've got a heart that's a little more fancy than this heart that you might want to use. Uh, any shape will work, and the sizes that I gave you are completely up to you. Um, you don't have to have this heart be 7 inches, this heart be 5 inches, and this heart be 3 inches. You could use any size settings that you like. You can also experiment with different motifs in here. So if I didn't want to have this particular motif, maybe I want to try some other ones. Um, I can try out some other ones. Um, in my experience, the ones that work the best are ones that are kind of like have a cross shape to them like this. This is one that's a little less dense than the one that I picked. Um, 
But like I said, you can experiment and see what patterns you like. See, so I can change it to whatever I want. Um, the more dense the pattern that you choose, the longer it's going to take to sew out. Um, so the tighter you see the stitching in here, the longer, the more stitches it's going to be, and the more dense the design is going to look. But uh, it just depends on your own personal tastes, uh, what, what setting you want. And you can actually adjust the density uh, of these as well by changing the pattern length here. So here, if I change this pattern length from 4 to 3, hey, the keyboard's not responding here. Come on, wake up, keyboard. There we go. It's a wireless keyboard. Sometimes it doesn't work. So I change this from 4 to 3. Click Apply. Look, that's made this tighter. So you can achieve a tighter density um, without having to um, you know, change the pattern. You can actually make it more dense. So if, if you think the default was a little too light, you can go and adjust it yourself. Just like that. Quick and easy towel monogram. Now, if you didn't want something quite this fancy, uh, and perhaps you wanted something um, that was uh, just a, a person's name, it's perfectly easy to do that as well. Um, for, for example, I have uh, the sample that I've used for years um, to show off towel embossing is just my mom's name, Janice, uh, embossed on a uh, the bottom of a towel inside a rectangle. And that's really, really easy to do. And uh, looks really nice too. So uh, I'm going to show you how to do that too uh, really quick. So essentially instead of using all these different shapes, uh, these different hearts of different sizes, um, I'm just going to delete this heart here. Um, you go into the drawing artwork tools here and I'm going to choose a rectangle. Again, you could use any shape you like. Uh, you could use a circle or a triangle. I'm going to do a rectangle and I'm just going to draw this in. Um, I'm going to change the size. Let's see. So say this is 11. I'm going to make it exactly 11 inches wide uh, and click apply here. That way I know it's going to fit in my big hoop. Okay. And so I've got my, my rectangle. I just bring in my letters. Import TT text. Um, I choose a font. Again, the thicker fonts work better. I'll use that same font because I like that. Um, we'll do meadow. You don't have to use all capital letters. Oops. Uh, but I am. So I'm going to click OK, and then I just place this within my shape and size it to the appropriate size. And if you want to, you can actually change the height of your rectangle so that you don't have quite as much space around your embossed part. Um, and now I have, a, I have a choice here. I can either do... Um, just one, um, what should I call it, just one uh, line and not have the outlines around it. But I actually find that having the, the satin stitch outlines around what you're doing um, kind of enhances the, the look of the design and makes it look cleaner. So I'm going to do it that way. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, select all of my letters here. And I could do that by clicking and dragging a box around them, as I just did or I could just select um, parts 2 through 7, which would have been these these letters in here. Um, I'm going to right click and we're going to break these apart. Um, oh, you know what? It actually doesn't let me do that. It, you actually have to break them apart individually. I didn't realize that. So uh, we're going to look at our letters that have uh, a hole in them. For instance, this A. And we're going to right click it and break it apart. Now we're going to do the D, which also has a hole in it. Right click, break it apart. Uh, and then the O. Just make sure we select just that. Right click it and break it apart. Okay. So now we've got our, our holes broken out uh, just the way we did in the last design. Um, now we're going to select this whole thing. And we need to take this whole design and, and copy it and paste it. And put it onto itself. Um, so let's see. We've got 10 individual pieces so far. Okay, so we're going to now, oh, yeah, we're going to copy and paste it. So right-click, copy, right-click, paste. And then we need to have our first 10 
So we're going to go to 1, and then it's actually easiest to select through 10 by just holding down the Shift key and then clicking on number 10 in the sequence view. Now we need to take this whole thing and we're going to combine it. Okay, so our whole first part that's going to be the embossing is now combined and we're going to convert it to a complex fill. Oh look, I've made a mess of it. So what I did was I didn't leave these parts broken out. So if you get this, that means that you've combined your sections back together and you've got these big jumps in here. So what I ought to have done, let me go back here, I just undid what I had done there. I want to make sure that I only actually have the outer part of each letter selected. So the way that I told you to do it um, is just not going to work. So I need to undo twice here. Uh, so we're back before I combined everything. We've got 20 individual designs again. So what we need to do is click on the outer part of the design and then we need to hold down the control key and select each individual letter making sure that we only click on the outside part that we broke out. There we go. And then we're going to convert it to... Oh, no, we're going to combine it and then convert it to a complex fill. And now you see we don't have that mess in there. Okay, so we're going to change this from a standard fill to motif. I'm going to do 115 again because I like that one. Okay, now we need the embossing for the insides of the letters here here and here I'm holding down the control key and selecting each one and then I do the same thing convert it to a complex fill oops and change it to a motif 115 apply okay now if I want to make any density adjustments I could do it now I could do it later um, I'm gonna change my density to make this a little tighter I'm gonna select each one of these complex fills here uh, there's four of them and change my pattern length to 3 again because I think that looked nice. Depending on your computer it might take more or less time for it to recalculate stitches like this. It's taking a little while here. There we go. It's done it. So this is now nice and dense and now we're going to change all of these artworks. All these artworks so you select all of them either by clicking and dragging a box around them or you could select the first one hold down shift and select the last one uh, or you could hold down control and click each one however you want to do it just select all of them um, and now right click this time we're going to convert to a steel stitch and again I recommend changing the width of this to two millimeters instead of three. It makes it look a little bit cleaner. But that's it. You could sew this out and it'll have the embossing poking up through here and be nice and clean and finished. You just sew it out on a towel. This also works on like a polar fleece shirt. Um, it, it achieves kind of the same effect. And you can do it with any font that you have built onto your computer. And you can, of course, use those fonts that I showed you how to get um, in the videos detailing how to use that DaFont website. Um, you can use any of those fonts. Um, so this is a, a pretty cool project um, and is pretty easy to do. Um, once you you just have to remember all the steps. So just watch this video whenever you want to do it, and, and you'll see how to do this. It's something that really gets a wow out of people. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.